Hell of a story time. Man, that, ooh, ooh. like I said, I'm sitting here with my mouth wide open like, bro, we got... We got rapes, we got assaults, we got we got destroyed bathrooms. Like, man, what's what what is up with that? All right, let's get into it. Star in the building. So, we came across each other in in a group, and you. Uh, mentioned the fact that you're a pilot truck stop worker and I was like hmm that that makes for an interesting conversation because consensus to all of us truck drivers we have some feelings about about maintenance in the showers truckers paying for parking and the overall uh, customer service at, at some of these pilot truck stops. I felt that you would probably be a good person to have a little conversation about all of those topics. But before we start, you also mentioned the fact that you're, are you interested in getting your CDL? Uh, actually, I already have my CDL permit for my class A. I'm just waiting to go to school. You, you picked out the school already? Yes, I did. Uh, but I have multiple companies that have sent me something and I just really haven't told them like, hey, I already found out where I'm going. and I'm keeping my options open because I'm not leaving until the beginning of the year. So so as far as as far as schools, are you going to a company sponsor school or you or is this a or is this a school that you're paying out of your pocket? It's company sponsored because I'm a veteran, but everyone I talk to say go to their company when you're starting out just because it's going to be easier to find a job as a a beginner. I would tend to agree with that, especially right about now, because 2023 for for new drivers that's coming out of school, e even they are finding it hard to find a position. And a lot of a lot of people in the comment session in these groups saying, "Well, instead of just paying out of your pocket and having that struggle." Why not just go to companies like Prime, Swift, Snyder, and you'll automatically know that you have a a job afterwards. That's that's how you felt when you was in the midst of looking? Yeah, basically. That's what's up. Well, congratulations and much success towards towards trucking, but you already went and got your 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 permit and everything, so you're you're good to go on the next step. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I've had my permit for actually, I want to say about two months now, um, which is one reason, you know, I went on and joined the group just to kind of get my foot in the door and any questions I did have before I either chose a company or a school, because originally I was going to go to school. That group has kind of helped me figure out, and it's also been easy to figure out, like, since I have a pet and all that, and I'm married what route to go with all that stuff cool shout out to the to the groups that you have that you have joined now some of these groups they 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 can be rough at times they they can be rough at times but they can also be good at times too you you just have to you just have to sip through the mountain of bs in the comment section in order to find a particular answer to your question have you have you ran across any of of the BS in the comments? Uh, I have. Actually, the comment section that you found me in was the first time I got a lot, I don't want to say hate, but negativity is a better word. Yeah, a lot of backlash. All right, so let's get it, man. So pilot truck stops, you 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 work for them. How, how long have you been working for them? Oh, did I lose you? So, pilot truck stops, how how long have you been working for them? Since I got out of the military, so almost a year. And I started off as a cashier and then somehow became maintenance and now I know every job in there. So a year so a year in. So talk to us. Let, let us know about from from humble beginnings with with pilot truck stops to where you at right now. So like I said, I started as a cashier and then we were so short on maintenance because no one wants to deal with, no offense, but the truckers. 
because maintenance has way more responsibility and gets paid way less than any of the other jobs in there. The restaurants get paid more than us. And so I kind of switched over because I was the only female in there that could keep up with the men. And they knew that. So I got kind of stuck with it. But, I mean, I like it at times and I don't at times, which is where a lot of the maintenance are. Wow, that is that is crazy to hear that you guys get paid way less, but y'all do way more, though. Well, the only reason they do that is because a lot of times, especially when the building, or I don't want to really say the building, the companies started maintenance positions and started offering showers, truckers were tipping maintenance. And we didn't have to claim those tips, but... We get paid like a dollar above minimum wage, which where I'm from is only, I believe, ten fifty. So we only get paid eleven fifty, and cashiers make almost four dollars more than. Me. So let me get this straight. At at one point, you guys was getting tipped by us. I mean, truck drivers was actually tipping. That how how was that? How how did they do it? Did they just leave it in the back in, in the shower room or they or was it paid into their their credits or was there a tip jar? What how how was that possible? So some truck stops do have tip jars. When I first started with the company I had a lot of the older truckers come in and that's when, you know, I noticed the tips versus the younger truckers that don't. So I guess the older truckers who have been doing it for forever and a day since before we were born, I guess that's still established in them. They said that the reason we don't have a tip jar is they keep having to replace the jars. So for the most part, for us, they just leave it in the building or they take and we'll be back there in the laundry room folding towels or walking around cleaning the bathrooms, trash, whatever. And a lot of times they just hand it to us. Either one is usually how it happens, but it's honestly more they leave it on the bathroom. Yeah, they want to make sure that you guys actually get it because being that they leave the doors open and there's money in plain view and you got a lot of traffic that goes in and out of those areas, they just happen to look in there, $10, and just swipe her, no swiping type <laughs> $10 deal. would be nice, but no. <laughs> you say no. Uh, you're lucky if a trucker leaves you a dollar. Oh, my God. Man, I mean, well. If every trucker left a dollar for every shower that one of the maintenance men cleaned on a slow day, you'd go home with an extra $50. On a busy day, you go home with an extra 120 And that's just them leaving a dollar. Wow. Well, I mean, I, I I leave whatever change in my pocket. I I usually have maybe about $3, $4 in change. And I just, I, I just leave it right there. And I look outside and I just tell the... I tell the maintenance worker, I say, hey, bro, or sis, this for you, so they can come in here and uh, and snatch it up. But, yeah, I can under, I, I can understand, especially if we go in there and the, and the showers are clean and was presented well. You know what I'm saying? Why not? But let me ask you this, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to I'm, I'm going to have to say that some of these not not your particular store, but. Some of these pilots' uh, showers is is not taken care of well, and I mean I I've seen some showers that l like they atrocious, man. I mean, what what, yeah. what do you say? What do you say about that? So I have been into other pilots because they sent me to like work when they were missing someone or someone was on maternity leave at different stores, and actually where I work, there's Two truck stops within like a mile of each other. Like they're both pilots, but they're within like a mile of each other. So they'll switch us between the stores at times. So honestly, it depends on if you go in there and the shower's clean, of course. And if you're taken care of, you know, if you need an extra towel and they actually give you an extra towel and all that. Like my main store, our showers are huge. We only have like four of them, but they are huge because they're all handicap accessible. But the store that I usually go to, they're really small, but there's double. They're both clean and well taken care of, but, like, from a trucker standpoint, I'd rather shower at the store with less showers 
like even if you have to wait or whatever because their showers are 10 times better which I've gone in there and truckers have destroyed it and I have nine waiting on the board and I'm quick don't get me wrong like I'm second in the region for my timing to clean showers I can clean the huge shower in less than two and a half minutes but when that's destroyed I'll admit I have to cut corners sometimes to get those people in there because I have truckers constantly can I get in my shower now is this one mine that are trying to steal a shower when you leave it open to go get a towel and then you got to scream at them to get out not fun (laughs) you quick with it so uh, give me uh uh, a, a typical cleaning you you go in there and you start where so you'll go in there with two cleaning towels and um, i've seen some companies use a steam spray some just use a spray bottle we just use a spray bottle because it's quicker and we can get to easier to reach surfaces instead of carrying the actual steam around and so what i i do is i can't actually wear gloves unless it's like something really dirty which trust me i've seen but i can't wear gloves because i'm allergic to latex and everyone likes to use the non-latex ones because they're comfortable so i always run out but so i'll grab the towels throw them in the laundry room just to get them out of my way and then put all my stuff in there the guest towels which consists at least for our company i've seen it different at other companies an actual cleaning towel a floor mat or foot towel whatever you want to call it and a wash rag and then you have your cleaning towel and your spray bottle. We start by spraying everything from the walls, floor, and we even have to take that annoying little soap dispenser that they put in there off to clean behind it so that no mold builds up from like it getting water in the cracks and everything. And spray the toilet, sinks. The last thing I do is empty the trash, but I do know a lot of people do that before. I just do it last in case I have to throw my towel away. And you're supposed to technically start with the sink and then tool it but I've seen a lot of people take a second towel in there with them and that's the last thing they do so that if they need to just get rid of both towels they can do that but the correct order is sink wall floor and then your second towel is supposed to be for the toilet and you're supposed to clean the whole base and the whole top they don't require you to clean the inside unless it's dirty like visibly dirty but it does have to be cleaned at between every other shower if it's not some truck drivers and i'm i'm gonna have to say including myself have seen it the cleaning towels are are you guys using the same towels as y'all would give us to use for for drying and wash purposes because i i mean i i I hate to say this but i i have seen some use those towels and and then put it back in the, and put it in a washing machine to be washed with the, with the regular towels that you guys would give us. I have heard the horror stories about that and that is one of my biggest pet peeves is when like another maintenance person's on shift and they even if it's by accident throw the cleaning towels in with the regular towels because those are covered in bleach, they're covered in dirt and it drives me nuts. No, so we have our cleaning towels they're in the same room, but they're actually separated from our guest towels. And our cleaning towels, we used to use white ones, but we figured out that the ones the company considers cleaning towels aren't very absorbent. So you're having to go through like five or six just to clean one shower because they get soaked. So we started taking, and the towels, instead of, well, sharkers will stop taking them, the old towels that we have to throw away from the guest towels when they start fading or bleaching or whatever, or ripping even. We use those as cleaning towels, and we we can use one to two of them, far less waste and way more absorbent, and we can actually rewash those. The white ones that we are technically supposed to use, we can't rewash. We just have to throw them away. So if we don't have a box of those, we have no showers. But no, we, at least personally, my company, we don't, put them together i have heard the horror stories about some truck stops you know they just throw them all in there and guest towels are and cleaning towels are the same thing and i'm sure some of them do that because that is disgusting yeah that that is that is not hot so you say you've been working for pilot for about a year so you you wasn't privy to working at pilot during covid were you i was actually in the military during covid which 
the reason I started with Pilot was because I was a plumber and they wanted me to be the plumber over a pilot, but I decided I didn't want to go that route. So it all just kind of unfolded into perfect little horror story. So back back to cleaning. What was some of the what was some of the atrocious cleanings that you have done after a truck driver? I mean, I listen. I mean, we we oh we some grown we we some grown men and women, man. And I even in the regular bathroom have seen truck drivers just being the most horrible when it when it when it comes to sanitary after they use the the restroom. So. Of course, there is a toilet in there, and you already mentioned that you guys don't have to clean the inside, but have there been any times that the that the toilet was just jacked up and you felt like, I'm, I'm not messing with this one? So, thankfully, because of my plumbing background, I don't have a weak stomach, but uh, my husband is actually a maintenance personnel at a different truck stop. And we were sharing horror stories one time, and he actually talked me on this one. I came home one day and was extremely just annoyed. Someone had flushed a whole chicken drumstick down the toilet. I am not kidding you when I say this. And then, am I allowed to cuss on here? Yeah, you good. And then they shit and pissed all over it and left a 10-inch vibrator. on the. We have these benches instead of the ones that you can move around. Ours are actually attached to the wall, and they're a lot larger to help if someone's transitioning out of a wheelchair. They left that on there. Fit. Did I did I lose you again? Pick up where you was talking about the 10-inch vibrator. So it was a 10-inch vibrator, and it was covered in shit, as well as the stool and some of the walls were. And it took me, instead of my usual, like, two and a half, possibly three minutes if the shower's bad, it took me almost 10 minutes to clean that. I had help in there. When I tell you, we could not reopen that shower. Mind you, we only have four showers. I had like four or five waiting at this point. I couldn't reopen that shower for at least two or three hours because it smelled so bad. But his horror story topped me that day. He had someone, I don't know if it's male or female, but they bled everywhere and then took a huge shit in the shower. So they actually had to biohazard that shower. Because it took them two hours to clean everything. Like, I can deal with the Truckers a lot of times leave skid marks all over the toilet seat. I don't know how they do it, but it's all over the toilet seat. And I could deal with that. But when he showed me pictures of that, me being a plumber had nothing to do with it. Because it, I about puked. I don't think my stomach could have handled that one. And, and again, let me make sure, let me make absolutely certain that you guys get that you guys are underpaid cleaning up stuff like that after truck drivers, for real. Yeah, and the thing is, we we are underpaid because they assume, you know, the old ways when everyone tips. There's people who go to restaurants now, like fancy restaurants, that don't even tip. And they expect them to tip someone that's cleaning a shower. Because, hell, I've been told before, because there for a while we were telling, we had someone coming in and stealing tips. So they told us, you know, if you see a trucker about to go in a shower, please ask him to close the doors if he's leaving a tip so that no one goes in there and takes it. Because a lot of times, and I don't want to sound racist with this, I promise I'm not, you'll get, like, Canadians or people from Mexico. They're foreigners here, and they don't know the policies here. They'll go in the shower as soon as they see the door open, and they take that money. And I don't even real- think they realize what that money's for. Because I have actually lost, and this was on Christmas of last year. Someone left me a $20 bill in there, and I physically watched this dude take it. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, they left money. And I'm like, no, that's mine, not yours. And he's like, no, mine. I took it. I'm like, what? Get out of my truck stop right now. I had to get the manager back there, and I was like, what the heck is this dude even doing in a shower? He does. He didn't even purchase the shower. Like, don't me wrong, we're not supposed to, but a lot of times, if someone doesn't have a shower credit, unless they're being extremely rude to us, then we're making them pay. But I think that's any service industry. But if, if they're polite and, you know, genuine, a lot of times we will load a shower credit onto their loyalty card and give them 
sort of a free shower because it goes on there instantly. And that's just so, you know, they can get in the shower and it holds them over until the fuel for their company credits kick in. Because sometimes that does take like 24 hours. Well, let me ask you this, Star. Why why have Pilot went up on their on their showers? Because I I would assume that they went up on their showers to cover the cost to, to give you guys the cleaning. So one of the reasons, well, I know it's different per location because I've heard in Texas and Florida, places like that, that are highly populated with truckers, it can be up to $25. And I've heard places as low as like 10 So ours actually just recently went up. So ours are now 17 They were 16 So they only went up a dollar. But that's one reason they implemented the whole shower credit thing was to actually help out with that. But our company actually doesn't make barely 1% of the profits. We make 0.8% a year from showers at our location. The location a mile down the road from me, they only make 1.2% of their annual income per year from showers. So the company's really not making anything from showers. That's to cover the influx in water costs, the shower maintenance costs, because the GMs have a budget each year. And I only know this because I helped my GM with his budget when we got a new GM. And so I'm sure we've all been into a shower, bathroom, whatever, and something's been broken in it at one point. The budgeting cost for that isn't from a company use. It's from each store's use. And so they took that from showers for a lot of truck stops, actually. So if you want that bathroom or shower fixed, that's what that money's going towards for a lot of the stuff is the profit there, which isn't really any, that they're making from showers. Some of it is being used to repair the bathrooms or showers. And none of that's going in you guys' pockets. No. And so the original post that you actually found me on in that group My GM was asking, because he had a lot of us maintenance people, like, hey, why are we getting tips no more? Like, the restaurant that's actually in our truck stop, which it kind of, we, so a couple of maintenance workers had complained to him. Well, I don't really want to say complained. I brought it up to him that, you know, we aren't getting tips anymore. And we're lucky to go home in the day with $5. A lot of times we don't go home with anything. So the only wage we're making that day is from our actual hourly pay, which obviously is like nothing. And he actually got on board when we had seen this really, really difficult trucker who was yelling at us for him not having a shower credit. And we won't add the credit if the GM's there unless the GM gives us approval, which usually he's really good about. He's pretty nice. But we were asking our GM, like, hey, what do you want us to do? Like, he says he has a shower credit, but we did a barrels inquiry, and it's saying he doesn't have any, and he's screaming at us. Like, what do you want us to do? Well, I am sorry if you hear me yelling at my cat. He told us to take, and, you know, we were kind of slow. We only had, like, one waiting at the time. He's like, you know, the next shower that opens up, just put him in it. It's fine. He's like, we'll take the loss for the day. So we did that. So the dude got a free shower. He was in there for almost three and a half hours, which is fine. We do courtesy checks, which I know a lot of truck stops have started doing after an hour just to make sure you're good, you know, make sure nothing happened because obviously people have died in the shower before. That's pretty much every truck stop has lost someone in a shower. So we do courtesy checks just to check on you. And as long as you answer, you know, take your time. We don't care. But he then went over to Subway and then came back to our restaurant that's in the truck stop because I guess Subway was closed or whatever because they're right across the street from us. And he ended up getting like $45 worth of food there and then tipped everyone on shift, which was like, I want to say four people, $100 each. And he's like, that is ridiculous. Like our GM agreed with us. He's like, that's ridiculous. He's like, I completely see where y'all are coming from. He's like, figure out, because he knew I had connections with a trucking group, as well as he knew, like, I knew truckers because I was trying to get my foot in the door in trucking. He's like, see if they, like, who genuinely knows they're supposed to tip, who don't know, like, who even thinks about it kind of thing. Like, yeah, I could do that. 
So that's when I posted the post to that group that you found me in, genuinely asking if anyone knew. Star, star, and star. I so star. I gotta ask you. I gotta. This this is the same irate driver that was up there arguing with you guys about not having the shower credit, but yet went to other places and 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 tipped them and treated them well with a hundred dollars but yet came over there to argue with you guys about a free about a free shower yeah he wouldn't spend the 17 dollars, but basically because i think he got a couple sandwiches and chips or something like that i'm not sure what he got i just know it was like 40 dollars worth of food and because someone actually commented they're like damn that's enough for like three people but he wouldn't spend the $17 and then he basically spent 440 something dollars on food because he tipped all four of them a hundred dollars each. But yet come over there to you guys to argue with you about giving him a free shower. Maybe in his mind, I guess I could say in his defense, in his mind, he figures that he, he's spending all this money in the, in the store which I know you're going to say that spending money in the store has nothing to do with with the shower. But in his mind, he's spending money in the store. So in his mind, he feels that the shower should be free. I mean, yeah, his defense was that he fueled yesterday and it should already have been on there. And so when we did the checks and all that, I know a lot of companies, you have to fuel over a certain amount to get a shower credit for us. It's 100 gallons. So every 100 gallons is a shower credit. He had only fueled like 60 gallons worth. Like he didn't even fill his truck all the way up. If he was driving a big rig, I don't know what he was driving. So he hadn't even fueled enough to get that shower credit. And we tried explaining that to him. And he did end up calling corporate. And like we sent corporate the receipts and all that because we had already had them saved because we knew what was coming. And they dropped the case with the quick fist. They loaded the shower credit, a shower credit on the dude's thing. It was like, hey, like you didn't feel enough, but here, and he got two free showers. But like I said, our company doesn't make a profit for that. Wow, that's that. Now that was a crazy story right there. That was that's that's crazy right there, man. I but you, I'm I'm, assume, hey, I'm, I'm assuming he's not the. I'm I'm assuming he's not the first truck driver to come in there and give you guys give you guys headaches over over shower credits right shower parking no i've had a trucker pull out a gun because of a shower before i'm the only female maintenance at that store so i'm not allowed on the outside perimeter unless i'm on the golf cart or whatever and just going to check something out but i had to go out there one day because usually i have a male on shift with me just in case, you know, I need to send him out there or take him out there with me. Unfortunately, I didn't have any males in the building that day. And I had to go out there because someone had called, so they were broken down, and they were in the way. So we had to go check where they were to port on the spot in case, you know, another trucker's not paying attention or for some reason a car comes back to the truck lot. And we didn't want there to be an accident. So I take some cones out there with me. And... I got grabbed and a million horror stories in one. The worst thing though was with showers and you may get a kick out of this one was we had a guy who thankfully I'm a vet. And like I said, the male maintenance guy that's usually there with me, he was at a different store that day, but he was there one day and we had a guy come over the counter, like jump the counter and our GSL which is our general store lead, she is a ball of fire. So you get rude with her, she gets rude right back. And she has no filter. And a guy was screaming at me about checking his ID. And I was like, I can't do that. You know, you don't have an ID. I'm sorry, I can't sell you tobacco. And he's like, fine, just give me a shower. And so I rang him up for a shower, and he didn't have his loyalty card. He's like, well, since you couldn't sell me tobacco, the least you can do is put me in the shower. I was like, no, sir, I can't do that. We have seven waiting rooms right now. All the showers are full, and they just filled up within less than 10 minutes. So I can't do that. I'm sorry. I was like, if there was less, I probably would. 
just because, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you didn't know you needed your ID, he jumps the counter like a freaking spider monkey, which I was impressed because he was not that young. And comes at me and pins me against the wall. Thankfully, the male maintenance guy was there. He's a veteran, too. We're the only two vets in the whole store. He has serious anger issues, too. So by GSL screaming, the male maintenance guy pull, pulls him off me, and we had to restrain this guy with zip ties until the cops got there because he was out of control over a shower, which was not our fault. But he didn't have his loyalty card, and we couldn't do anything at the time because we had so many waiting. Over seventeen dollars. He went to jail. All that for, for all that for a shower because he couldn't. He he didn't have none on his card. Yeah, he he got an assault charge for seventeen dollars. Wow, that's crazy to hear all these stories, man. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys have a culture ball to that. All right, so yeah. So being that you are in maintenance, you, you mentioned somewhere mm -hmm. in the story that you, you don't go outside to do any cleanup outside? Oh, no, I do. If it's dark, I'm not allowed on the very outskirts because where the semis park, they block the camera that actually views that way. And they're not allowed to put cameras in the lot because I'm sure you're a trucker yourself. You've been at a truck stop and you have seen stuff you don't want to see from truckers walking around. Yeah, yeah, plenty, um, plenty of stuff from biohazards yeah, to... Yeah, well, there was a lawsuit to, a few years ago about that. What happened with that? Um, From my understanding, because this is before I was with the company, a trucker was walking around naked outside his truck, and it was caught on camera. And I guess he spotted the camera or something. He called and sued the company for taking his photo naked when he was the one walking around. and. Mind you, this is broad daylight. I've seen the video. It's broad daylight. Wait, he's he's walking around naked, uh -huh. mentally disturbed, but yet he yeah. he called it. He he actually got a lawyer to fight for him for for being recorded. He won the case and won the case. He won the case. Yeah. So apparently he has like free prime parking for the rest of his career. And uh, I think he won like, I want to say $100,000 from it or something like that. Like it was a decent chunk of change. Oh my God. Yeah. He, yep. He did. So we're not allowed cameras like all the way out there now. So our cameras have to be in the same parking lot as the auto on parking, which I wish truckers would stop parking in because they block it even more. But it views the back, but you can't see the back when all those trucks are in the way. So I'm not actually allowed out there at night because I'm a female and I'm more likely to be grabbed. Which, don't get me wrong, I've held my end up. But our radios don't really work out there as well as we'd hope they would because, you know, they just get blocked with all the sound and muffling from trucks running that you can't hear as much as you would think for being in such a short distance. And those things are rated to work like 10 miles and they don't. But... So I go out and I can do the diesel islands, the inner perimeter, and the unleaded islands, trash, you know, clean up the parking lot a little. But I'm not allowed on the outer perimeter when it's dark because it's going to be less likely for them to actually get to me or someone to see if I get grabbed, which I have out there before. And I wasn't supposed to have it on me, but thankfully I did. I actually had a pocket knife on me that day and I had to stab the dude's leg to get loose and then I had to get on my golf cart and I had to call someone out there and unfortunately for the dude my husband was the one working that night because he was helping us out at the store and yeah no it was a bad night I lost a nice pocket knife that night holy cow I'm just sitting yeah. <laughs> back. I, I'm just sitting back, uh, l just listening to these stories with, with awe. Like my mouth is like, it's like wow. A I lot mean, of the truckers are not very nice. I can imagine that. That that I can imagine. I I can, I can agree with you on that. A lot a lot of us out here are not. We 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 got some mental problems for real for real sticking with with outside let's let's talk about the controversial prime parking a lot of a, easy prime parking a lot of a lot of pilots like use or have maybe 
ninety percent of their lot reserved parking. Do you guys get now from that? Because I always said that they they charge full prime parking for you guys to go out there to keep it clean. Is that the same assessment with the showers? They don't make no money off of that either. And 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 have that and have that money come over to you guys for going out there and and cl- keeping the parking lot clean. So unfortunately, our location is not a good example of that. So we enforce prime parking to a minimum due to we have had three people raped, one shot, and one was stabbed in the back, and he is now paralyzed for the rest of his life. Because of prime parking, because of telling people to move. So we're not really allowed to go out there and move people that much anymore, which don't get me wrong, we still have to because I swear it's like truckers can't read sometimes. We have two signs and two entrances right beside each other. One says auto and RV only. The other one says truck entry only. They always park in the auto and RV, which is right beside our building because they're like, I want to be close. But that's obviously reserved for RV parking, that's why it's larger. And they will park there, and we have to move them from there. But with the prime parking, we're not allowed to enforce it, which we don't make that much from it because a lot of truckers, they'll just park and they'll stay there. They don't care. Originally, what the cost, and I only know this from the other store, the cost of prime parking spots is supposed to be to take care of the lot, the paint for the signs, stuff like that. It's specifically for the parking lot itself is what that money goes to. Nothing else. And so like the other stores, a decent example of that is they're allowed to enforce it because they haven't had as many issues as we have. But we we always joke and say that since the store two two stores are so close, we get all the crazy people, they get all the same ones. So they're allowed to enforce prime parking, but we're not because, like I said, rape, stabbing, shots. So I'm not allowed to actually go out there, and neither is half the truckers. We do have to go out there occasionally and move someone who's, like, last night we had two trucks, actually from the same company, so we think they were related to each other in some way, who had just blocked the entire entrance so no trucks could get in. There's only other, there's only one other way to get into that lot, and you have to go through the gas lines, and around a 90-degree angle, that's meant for a fuel truck. And that's because our fuel truck has to park at an angle when he fuels. We have had where it's been blocked before. Someone's had to come through the other side, which they're not even supposed to be in that lot, and they rammed into our fuel truck. We had a giant buyer out there. We lost probably about, I want to say, five pumps because they had caught on fire before the fire department came. I mean, that was a fun day at work. I mean, I I got paid to sit around, but not so fun <laughs> at the same time. So, yeah, prime parking is primarily for, like, the funds go towards fixing the lot for truckers. So when we get truckers complaining all the time, like, at our store about your parking lot out there is full of potholes and needs redone, and we're like, from what funds? Because we can't enforce prime parking. We have a total of 44 spots. Well, technically 42 because two of the signs are missing where truckers are bringing them over. And the paint's missing now from it being over the winter through the summer now because it hasn't been redone since last year. And so we'll get complaints about our lot. And we always tell them, where do you think those front funds come from? Nowhere now. So that lot can't get fixed until the company has extra money. Hey, let's let's backtrack for a second. The stabbings, Mm -hmm. the raping... Or all of this is on your watch while you was with the company? Yeah. Well, one was before me. The gentleman that was paralyzed, I met him because it happened like three days after I actually started. So I did not really know him. And one of the ratings were, I want to say a month or two before I started. And then two were as I've worked for the company. So within the last year, they've had all that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had truckers getting my get in my face and stuff. Like I had one get out of his truck, and he's like, "Bitch, you need to go back to the damn kitchen and learn your damn place." And I'm like, "I don't think you getting out of that truck smart." Needless to say, I did have to fight a dude that day, 
And I'm pretty sure I ruined his manhood because he even said, how the hell did I just get taken down by a woman? Try again, sir. Because I actually have a nickname at work because I am extremely short. Like, I'm like five foot and I look extremely innocent. But they call me Baby Pet Bull because I'm the one they send to go scream at people. From my GM's mouth, no one can meet my bitchiness. So the one rape occurred while you was actually there how how did you how did you guys find out that that she was raped did did she run actually, in actually two of them occurred while i was there so one was before so how how did you guys find out and what was the outcome of that like what i mean can you tell like so, what happened one of the girls we were actually able to like thankfully she was wearing a radio because a lot of them don't but if we're going outside, we really need to have a radio on because, you know, there's that chance that we can grab it and someone can hear us. And this, one of our this team occurred, members this occurred to it. one. Wait, wait. So this this occurred. This happened to one of one of your employees or one of the employee or two yeah. of the employees. They were all two employees. Oh, my God. Go go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. You're fine. Uh, no, so thankfully, like I said, that one girl, she was wearing a radio. Um, unfortunately, the other girl, she was, I guess you can say far enough out that we couldn't catch anything on the radio. Like, she was wearing one. And we, like, look back now, all we heard was static. So trucks were blocking her off, you know, the sound out there and stuff. We couldn't actually understand what was going on. So unfortunately, you know, we did not find out about that until God bless that girl's soul. She came inside. And we had another trucker that came in and, like, he helped her in the building because he had broke it up. And he basically had to carry this girl up the stairs because she could barely walk. And she was out back, so the stairs were the closest entry point at that point, which I don't know why they didn't take the elevator. But from the first one, they were able to catch the guy because, you know, we had caught it in time. And thankfully, it was somewhere where... You couldn't see it happen, but you could see, like, she was able to pinpoint the truck, and you were able to see the truck number on the truck. So, like, we couldn't see the actual rape itself, but we were able to see the truck where, you know, she had pinpointed, and actually one of us had gone out there, and for some reason, the dude was still there. And so, you know, the cops were called that time, obviously, and they were able to catch him. But the second guy had took off. As soon as it was broken up by that other trucker, which what killed us was, which I don't know why she was out there pregnant, but she was. She was like three months pregnant. She ended up losing the baby because of that. The dude beat her to a pulp. If that other guy hadn't broken it up, like, he probably would have killed her. And, like, it was terrible. Like, we couldn't have females out there at all the second it got dark for, like, a good six months. Like, no one would go out there. Because two of the rapes happened within, I want to say, five months of me starting in the company. They were just months apart. So this, so the young lady that lost that lost her baby, she was not only raped, but she was she was beaten as well. Oh, he beat her to the pulp. Like she's a really pale skinned girl, and she was so dark after that, from so many bruises that if I saw her like knowing her. Because I knew her since I worked there. She worked there forever. I don't think I'd have been able to ID her. Like, she was messed up. He broke her jaw in, I think, two places. She had to have her jaw wired shut. She had scars all over her body. and it, it was nasty. Like, there was blood everywhere. And it took us probably a good three hours to clean all the blood up off the floor. Like, it was everywhere. Up the stairs across the parking lot, which all we can do is bloods on the parking lot or sidewalk is spray bleach and some water. That's all we're allowed to do, which we went out there and did, obviously. But it took us probably three hours to clean up all the blood everywhere um, after we got there from the cop to do so. And I didn't leave until about usually I get off before midnight. I didn't leave until almost four o'clock the next morning. So I basically worked 14 hours. Wow. And so she, the poor girl, like she can't work now because she is traumatized. Like she comes in and sees us occasionally and she is traumatized to go anywhere near the back at all. I mean, I, I would be too after, after, after such a, such an assault. So, uh, so the rape of her occurred 
in the truck and the beating occurred outside the truck because you said you he had drug her into the truck and i guess he caught her off guard or something or asked her a question and she pointed or something like that we couldn't understand the whole story because she was so freaked out like she was all over the place of how it like actually happened but we do know that he drug her into the truck and somehow she had fought him off after you know the initial penetration part and the poor girl ran out of there no pants which i know how to be traumatizing for her anyways and he had caught her either coming down the stairs or when she was already down the stairs but he had caught up with her right outside the door and he beat her senseless like smashed her head against the stairs because i guess not all trucks have metal stairs i guess some of them collapsed up or something but apparently he had ones that collapsed up once they found his truck and all that and they said the thing that broke her jaw so badly was he hit the hinge on the stairs and it shattered her jaw completely she does have her wires off now but it is like a real bad speech issue now and i'm not sure if that's because like her jaw doesn't close all the way like she can't close it all the way now now this guy this driver the first driver was caught but this driver that actually did the did the assault he wasn't caught i mean was he caught or he, he wasn't, wasn't caught until like a month later oh he was caught yeah uh, they did end up catching up with him someplace because we were able to get a description out and we knew the company so the company, we had to wait for a while for them to, like, get us records of what drivers were in the area at that time. We did know the dude was African-American, and we knew roughly about what he was carrying. Like, we knew he was carrying dry van. So that led it down to, like, three of their drivers. And she did end up having to ID the dude. And he was eventually caught, but like I said, it was like a month or so down the road. And unfortunately, that dude didn't get as much percussion as you would think. He, I, I want to say he only got like six months in jail. For, for, and rape, and and for, for rape and assault? Yeah, he lost his CDL. He's on probation and only got like six months in jail. For but, rape and assault? And he caused her to lose her kid, so. Wait, they said wait, wait, wait. How is... Like how is that not a, how is that not a, how is that not more time? Like, I don't know. Like it, it made all of us mad because a lot of us there, we get really, really close to each other. So like when I told everyone I was leaving, cause I had originally planned on leaving right after Halloween, but I decided to stay until the beginning of the year so that, you know, it was kind of a fresh start on the year for getting my CDL. And like, I had people crying when I told them I was leaving, like, we're usually a really close-knit bunch, but it made all of us mad. Like, I barely knew the girl less than, I want to say, four months. And there was people who called off the next, like, two days and stuff to go see her in the hospital because she was in there for about a week before she was finally released. And unfortunately, you know, he didn't get that much repercussion. That's our judicial system at work, I guess. But the dude from the first rave where, you know, we were able to hear on the radio, he got more time and it was less bruising, you know, he didn't finish and stuff like that. So I guess it just depends on the judge. But I mean, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I couldn't tell you. Wow. With, with all that said, Star, with, with all that said and all the stories, which which is intriguing, with all that said, you still want to become a truck driver? So I was raised around multiple truckers. The man I call my dad is a trucker, has been for 24 years now, 23 years, something like that. And so I'd go on the truck with him all the time. And well, that's before he got a local job. And he taught me, you know, the ins and outs. So obviously I know they're not all terrible. I mean, there's quite a bit, but they're not all terrible. I mean, I've met truckers that I like more than my own family. And I've met some that it's like, who gave you a license? Who would let you out of an insane asylum? Because you're about to send me there. I had to actually one time, one of our restaurant workers had to go out there with me to move a driver once. And he was in the RV lot. And usually when we tell them to move, you know, we get a little 
do you have nothing better to do with your life? No, I do, but I have to come out here and move you like I'm a preschool teacher, so move your damn truck. But if he wasn't out there, honestly, I think they would have stopped prime parking at our location altogether. Like, I don't think they would have let trucks park there because we almost had, you know, another issue out there. And because a lot of them like to think, you know, I'm a trucker, you know, they're going to get scared and stuff. But unfortunately, a lot of us have to stand up to them, which is why they call me Baby Pet Bull was because of this. I had to, the dude got out of his truck. And I had to pin him down while the dude that was there with me called the cops. And I had to stay like that for 20 minutes until the cops showed up because this dude would not stop. Like, he was sitting in my face and everything. Like, I actually had to press the soul charges on this dude. And I'm, like, super freaking thankful that that dude was there because if not, like, if I didn't see the dude coming, he probably would have overpowered me. And because the only reason I knew he was coming at me was the restaurant worker yelled behind you because he was a few feet behind me or whatever. Cause I walked away first when I told the dude to move. And so now we do try to implement the buddy system out there for the most part, but it doesn't always work like that, obviously. So, you know, we're trying to help, but we also kind of can't do anything when, you know, we don't have the staff. Cause obviously, I mean, after COVID and all that, no one wants to work. And, you know, it, I have to grab people from the restaurant or there's been times I have to call someone from the other store to come all the way down there because it's like, hey, you know, there's no one on staff. I need help. And don't get me wrong. They get down there with the quickness because there's been times I'm the only one in the store because everyone's called off or, you know, we're just short staff because no one wants to work. Wow, man. Jeez, Louise. Man. So so now you 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 pretty much says it's it's time to go and and now you're looking forward to next year to to go to school and and get into trucking. I mean yes and no. Like, don't get me wrong. I do love my little truck stop family, but one, the pay is not that great and like I mentioned before I'm married, my husband and I are actually trying to have a child and get a house built and trucking is going to be one step in that and also like I said I'm from a long line of truckers that's why I know not all truckers are terrible and so it just it kind of felt right to you know follow in their footsteps and you know I am going to do on the road for a couple years and then I'll probably switch to local you know like a lot of truckers do but god forbid the things I've seen at that truck stop it scares me what I'll see on the road and we're in a rural area. God forbid if we're near the city. I mean, with all that stuff going on and all that stuff that you had occurred and all that stuff that you've seen, how how do your husband feel about you you driving? I mean, I'm I'm sure he got to feel some kind of way. Or better yet, why not he going to get his his CDL? So he actually is going to get his CDL eventually. Right now, he is the maintenance lead at his truck stop. So he, they have to find someone, train someone, stuff like that. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of the people we do get are very incompetent. Like we have one guy that literally can't spell the word minute right. I'm not kidding. He's like 46 years old, cannot spell the word minute right. This was his first job. Before that, he hadn't worked for 45 years. But so we get a lot of incompetent people. So, you know, that he has to find the right person. And he, he doesn't want to just leave the truck stop and shamble and all that which I understand. So they do know, you know, he is getting his CDL eventually. We think it's probably going to be about like six months or so down the road after I get mine. And eventually we're on a team drive together. But until then, you know, he knows, though I'm small, I can take care of myself. Also, you know, I do carry a taser with me usually. So just in case I need it, you know, it's there. And I'm not going out at night if I don't have to, honestly. I've seen the stuff they do. So Woo, star awesome conversation, man. Oops, wrong button. Man, I I realized you guys was going through all that. I I I I guess I hear it from the truck driver's point of view about the parking, about the shower, about the customer service, but man, li- just listening to the horror stories from your point of view is like <laughs> Yeah, it's 
not for the weak of heart, honestly. No, it isn't. And and again, you you guys for what you guys be going through and for what you guys be putting up with, you you guys are are painfully underpaid. I'm, I mean, you guys need to you guys need to maybe formulate get together and be like, bro, break um, us break us off twenty dollars an hour. Trust me. Trust me, we've tried. Our managers don't even get twenty dollars an hour. Are you serious? Yeah, no. Um, no, so don't don't lead, say that. Don't say that. The the managers gotta at I'm least get twenty dollars. Our lead is seventeen. Seven. And she just got that after being there for six months. Seventeen. Yeah, she only makes seventeen an hour. Well, that's that's a lead. I'm I'm talking about the store, like the actual store manager. He he does he or she does get at he least. He makes like. I, if you're coming over, come over. I I got I gotta I gotta believe that the store manager gotta at least make twenty dollars. I'm talking about the store manager, not like the assistant or the third. Yeah, our key, actual general manager. The actual manager of the store. He he or she actually gotta be making more than twenty dollars an hour, right? He's salary. He makes eighty three. Which don't get me wrong. Like you said, he's extremely nice. He does work hard, which is surprising because this is his first store like this is his first time managing being a gm and so he he does work hard but he only makes 83 a year and i know he puts in more hours than 83 thousand a year because there's been one week where i actually clocked him because he worked all the same days as me even the weekends because he will come in on the weekends with us and he worked four days where he had to work 20 hour days in a row the next day, he was only there for like three hours, but he was exhausted. I don't blame him. I have went home, too. Wow, man. And, of course, back outside with the prime parking and everything, you guys will go out there and try to enforce it. But as you said earlier, you guys don't even enforce it no more. But you come across drivers that that use this trope all the time. I'm out of hours, and I can't move, right? I, I, I thought that you guys would get assistance with law enforcement to force them to move. Y'all y'all don't even do that? So, unfortunately, we're in a rural area, like I said, and the state police to actually have a post is, I want to say, maybe about five or six miles away from us. So it's not, like, extremely far, but it's a small post. So they ain't got very many officers there as it is. And, unfortunately, where the truck stops are, both of them, actually, are in sublet small towns. So, like, the sublet that my truck stops has one sheriff, two deputies, and three officers. That's it. So, even the police around here don't have the manpower because it's a small town. The state police, it's a small post. It's just there, you know, for when we need state troopers. And we're trying to convince our actual, like, big corporate right now to get us, because I know a lot of truck stops do have, like, armed security out there. We're trying to convince them right now to get us an armed security. And they keep arguing with the backlash and all that, saying, you know, you don't need it. Just don't go outside. And it's like, so just don't do this. You know, for a lot of our job, we have to be outside. It doesn't matter the weather. Like, I've been out there, and it's been 16 degrees at night before. We have to be out there doing stuff because, you know, truckers throw, which, I mean, at least in my state, I guess some states are different, but in Kentucky, you're not allowed to drink on truck stop premises, but they still do it because there's no way we can be in their truck watching them, obviously. So we have to be out there cleaning the beer bottles and stuff so that other truckers don't run them over. We probably spend a good five to six hours of our shift outside. So we do need help with like either an armed security guard or a Obviously, I don't think the police can really do anything, but as of right now, corporate is telling us no. We are trying to get that implemented, and the store was kind of forgotten before the new GM took over. That was, you know, one reason why that post was made, because the GM wanted insight from actual truckers and wanted to get a feel for, like, what actual truckers knew and then went vice versa. And all this is going on in the great state of Kentucky.
Yeah, great's one word for it. You say great is one word. Well, Star, thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome conversation, man. I, man, I, woo, I didn't, I didn't realize all of that was going on at, 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 at that, at, at truck stop. Man, congratulations on getting your permit. Much success thank to you. you in, in the, coming into trucking. Maybe we can come back again and sit down again and, and 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 have a story about your your training and everything and what company that you decide to go with. So let's uh, let's circle let's circle back around for that. Do you know how many vibrators and dildos I find in showers a day? Well, let me let me circle let me let me circle that let me circle back around that. And during your time as cleaning out these showers and everything, what are some of the stuff that you that you came across that you that you found in in the showers like cell phones what, what was some of the craziest stuff that you that you found in these showers after after these truck drivers so obviously you have the normal stuff like cell phones wallets shampoos stuff like that you know that people leave and if it's like a cell phone you know we do try to find them or if we can't find them or didn't see who it was we'll take it up for so you know you know, they can come back for it. Same with, like, a wallet. If it's just, like, a shampoo or something, we usually put it on a cart back there and we'll keep it for a week. And if no one comes back for it in a week, we throw it away at that point. Of us, it's lavender products for our specific truck stop because then it has to be thrown away because we have some severe allergy. But the crazy things are usually a day I find about three sex toys, either vibrators, dildos. And mind you, these are not all from women. One time we actually... And I'm not joking when I say this. We found a child. Someone left a three-year-old child in the shower. Boy. Yeah. Apparently, we broke up a sex trafficking ring and scared them when we did a courtesy check on them. Somebody left a whole child in the a, shower. A whole child. When we called our GM about that, being like, so we called the cops, but what do we do with this kid until then? Um, like, we're good to take care of him, but uh, we're a little flabbergasted right now. W what the heck? He thought we were joking until he came down there because he lives, like, a few minutes away or whatever. He came to the truck stop and was like, there's a whole ass kid here. Uh, you, you thought we were joking? No, there is a whole child here. Oh, my God. You So you say you, so did you, did, did, how was you guys able to break up, break up something like that when y'all did the courtesy check? Like, Y'all knocked on the door, they said something, and then they just left, and you guys went back a few minutes later to find a kid? Yeah, so we knocked on the door, and I guess it spooked them. I don't know what was going on in there. Like I said, the kid was young. He was probably like three or four, so he didn't speak very well. And he was foreign, so we don't actually think he spoke very much English at all. We don't think this was his second language, or was his first language, I mean. And we did find out, you know, he was from Thailand. I don't know how he got all the way here, but he did somehow. And once the cops were called, you know, the cops did fill us in on some stuff. You know, they found out he was a missing child that I forget who they said had the relation to him or whatever, but they were suspected of taking him. So, you know, they did have to review some camera footage. I believe our GM, because we were asking for updates a few days later or whatever. I believe our GM said they did catch the guy and that the kid was, he was waiting for his mother to come pick him up and fly over. She was trying to get, like, an emergency visa or something so that she could come get him. Because, obviously, you know, there's extra hurdles and stuff when it's someone that's out of country. But, yeah, no, someone did leave a whole child in there one time. So we got we, we got children. We got sex toys. We got, we, 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 we got all sorts of stuff going on in the... In the showers being left behind by, 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 uh, would you want to say truck drivers? Cause I'm sure that the showers is open to the public, right? It is, but I'd say about 99.3% of the people who actually come to take showers are truckers. We have very few travelers or people who are from the public who stop in there to actually shower. Oh my God. And you say, are you saying vibrators are are being left behind not just by women like you a vibrator? So a, a a dude. I got a I got a good one for you. So we had this. I think he was foreign because he did not speak very good English. 
But it was enough that the end of the story is going to make sense. He had just came out of the shower and I went in because, like I said, I'm pretty fast at cleaning them. And I went in right after him, had my towel and spray bottle, set it on the sink and turn around because I hear a noise. There is a, I am not exaggerating when I say probably about 13 inch light up dildo spinning around on the wall. And so, like, I ran after the dude. I was like, hey, you left something in there. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, yeah, you, uh, Benny thing? He's like, oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah, please go get that. I had to call one of the guys back there because I could not keep a straight face from laughing. And then he tried calling corporate that I laughed. And I'm, corporate was like, what's going on? And I told them. And they were like, never mind, you're good. Any, anybody take a picture of that? I'm sure one of you guys had to take a picture of that right yeah i think one of them does have a picture actually we have lots of pictures of that stuff actually oh my god so the so the only thing that came out of the dude's a dude a dude mouth he he said oh that's that's so embarrassing that that's all he had to yeah, say that was like, only words, but, oh, that's embarrassing what, let me ask you this what was he in there with a woman i mean he could i mean with a woman and maybe the woman had snucked out before you guys no, sir. just by himself he was by himself oh my god this man well let me get you another maintenance person's opinion on this so you can pause the audio for a sec let me ask him what's the most embarrassing thing he's found because i'm actually curious about that now hey keith what's the most embarrassing thing you found in the shower you're not sure I told him about the dildo spinning story. Yeah. He, he he said he can't even think at the moment. He just woke up. I put him. Ah! Oh man, that's wow, wow. That's 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 crazy to find. I I would imagine stuff like that from from women. Uh, cleaning cleaning after after truck drivers. Who are the worst, men or women? Uh, this is gonna sound really mean, but the worst is. A lot of time you see it in the heavier set truckers, whether it be men or women, is when they haven't showered for a few days or whatever, they really stink. And the smell lingers in that shower for hours. But honestly, I'd say men, because I've had women, you know, throw, I've had dirty pads thrown on the wall and stuff like that. But I'd say men because they don't care where they leave it. Usually women try to clean after themselves, at least throw stuff in the trash or whatever. I've had men take shits and sinks, stuff like that. So I'd say from my opinion, men, I would say that some maintenance men or women would say the women are because a lot of times they don't care how they leave it. But specifically for me, it's been the men that don't care how they leave it. Wow. That is crazy. I mean, sometimes I go into these to these truck stop restroom and I, I've seen how these guys be leaving the restroom like and and some of them are horrible like they actually walk out of the restroom without even washing their hands bro they they go in yeah they, I've they, seen they, a lot of them do it yeah they go in they do the they do the damn thing and then come right back out and walk right past the sink and then come out on the floor and they they open up doors, put their hands on food, and I'm like, COVID? Like, come on now, really, bro? Grossest thing, I, though. I mean, not I, washing their hands. I mean, I like I said, I I don't know what be going through these truck drivers' heads, so that's why I don't even confront them. I I don't I don't confront them in the fuel island. I don't confront them in the restrooms because it just. It just boggles my mind, like, bro, how disgusting. That's that's not even cool. I just when I go out and I just just come in there with some gloves on now, like after seeing that, it's just it's just repulsive, man. Yeah, honestly, like one time I saw someone, and this about made me sick. We've all been in a gas station, truck stop, whatever, and they have, like, roller grills with hot dogs, tornadoes, stuff like that on them. Well, usually there's tongs or a fork or something there for you to put that on hot dog bun or in the wrapper, whatever you're putting it in. And I've seen some, I've actually seen this twice, someone not wash their hands. One guy actually had shit on his hand, went and grabbed that stuff with his hands instead of using tongs or something. 
which neither is if you're not washing your hands, it's disgusting. But we had to throw the entire grill away, take it apart, sanitize it and everything because it was all cross contaminated at that point. And it was a full grill. So we probably threw about, I want to say $60 worth of product away. It's disgusting, honestly. Wow. That's, I'm, I'm just in awe right now. Like just listening to these stories. I mean, I knew that there was, I, I knew that there was stories like this that's that's out there, but just to actually sit here and and listen to it is is mind boggling. Like, man, how how do you guys, how do you guys manage through all of that though? I mean, eight hours, twelve hours a day. I mean, how how do you? And and again, you guys are severely underpaid for all of this man like like how do you man how how do you manage through star yeah i'm sure a lot of the maintenance workers and honestly probably the cashiers because some of them do have to deal with what we deal with will agree that and you have to scream at someone because like there's been times where we've just had too much that day and we're just like look if you don't stop leave the damn store that's it. No in between. So I don't think there really is any managing other than just you're on the verge of a breakdown half the time. Well, again, man, I appreciate you coming on and sharing these stories with us, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me on. In too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track off with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.